ambulance services are patient breathing. Every year in Britain, 12 million people dial 999 for an emergency ambulance. More than 3,000 a day in the West Midlands. Right, stop screaming and listen to me. Listen, don't be afraid to push too hard. One and two and three. One and two. CPR in progress. Everyone clear? Each call tells the story of a person in desperate need. You upgraded to a red place who's been badly beaten. Do you know what it was you were stabbed with, Dom? And with call numbers doubling in the last decade. Go in, he's here, the head's here, the head's here, Neely, yeah. I can't. You can! For our public services, a situation that is now critical. They've got to find somewhere for them. They can't just say there's no beds. Is this literally what you've got, what you're standing up in? Got nothing else? OK. The failure of the system. Oh, God. Oh, oh my God. What was he doing? Hey. All right, guys, just, just one minute. Cameras follow cases as they unfold, minute by minute. Two ambulances, please, if possible. OK, yeah, as long as you're all right, I'll get everybody to you as quickly as I can. In the control room... Confirmed life extinct. Oh, man. And on the ground... Sorry for your loss. ..as the West Midlands Ambulance Service race to save lives. They are coming to you, blue lights and sirens, as fast as they possibly can. If you're breathing... Can you see the helicopter? Well, you're no trouble, honestly. Everybody needs help sometimes, don't they? This is the story behind the sirens. Get out of the way. I'm driving. Uh, Ambulance services are patient breathing. Uh, not as far as we're aware, no. What's happened then? Uh, we have called from one of our drivers, uh, an elderly gentleman to collapse on the bus. OK, so this guy isn't breathing at the moment? As far as we're aware, he's not breathing. Right, can you find out? Uh, the driver doesn't know. Tell him to put his ear next to the patient's mouth, see if he can feel or hear any breath, or is the patient's chest rising and falling? A passenger is seriously ill on a bus. The bus company calls West Midlands Ambulance Service for urgent assistance. Yeah, he's breathing, but his pulse is very slow and weak. Okay, so is he conscious now, this guy? No, no, not conscious, no. He's unconscious? Yeah. Of the 57 crews covering Birmingham today, only Darren and John are free to attend. They're six minutes away from where the bus has stopped. 999 mode, activate. You're up. Coming through from Travel West Midlands, so patient may be on a bus. Call still going on. Once I've got an update, I'll let you know either. Okay, yeah, that's all received. The bus driver has found a doctor's surgery on his route. It means a GP can now start CPR. Hello. Hello, are you the bus driver? Yes, I am. Lord. Hello there. Are you right by the patient now? Yeah, we've just got a doctor come for midnight surgery as well. Um, they're just uh, looking for him now. OK, can I speak to the doctor? They're just lying him out today, so... They're lying him down. Hello. Hello, is this patient in cardiac arrest? He is, yes. Yeah. He is? Yeah, we've got a defibrillator. You've got a defib there now, have you? We have, yeah. OK, and the doctor's in attendance with him? Yes, but we do need the ambulance. Yeah, that, that's fine. That's already been okay. arranged. Travel 49, thank you. Further update for you. We have got a second crew en route. Stay there. What are you doing? This is going to be awkward in the bus, mate. Might have to just get them off the bus. Well, no, we'll get them on the floor. Where's the bus? It wasn't that bus that was moving. Seriously, was it? No. Ah, oh, no, look, there you go, look. All right, we can see yet. Ah, there. I'll go in front. How long has it been down for? Doc, are you right to go back on? Yeah. It is cardiac arrest. Can you grab the stretcher off and the scoop? Doc's are doing CPR. I'll attach this. If everyone can jump off the bus, she doesn't need to be on here. Doctors stay for now, if that's all right. Doctors, is there any history at all that we know of? I don't know anything about 
Okay. Okay, Corleone. But you reckon five minutes down, yeah? Yeah. What? I said 15. Okay, 15. A patient's chance of surviving increases by nearly 70% if a defibrillator is available and CPR begins within five minutes of cardiac arrest. All right, where are we at? We did two shots. Do you keep doing CPR for us? Last was about a minute ago. Got airway in? No. All right, chuck us an airway. Adrenaline. Keep going with that CPR. Just keep going, keep going. Try and get a bit deeper if you can. Thank you. Yeah. Got some oxygen there. As Darren and John take over CPR, a paramedic officer is dispatched to help coordinate the scene. The second crew, on ambulance 4329, has been travelling on blue lights for five minutes to assist Darren and John. They've just arrived at the bus. Yeah, all right then, do you want to swap over? I'll come with CPR. Do you want me to do that then, darling? I'll jump anyway. Check pad. Everyone clear? Clear. Shocking. Right, carry on. So he's having the adrenaline now at 12.15. Is the bus driver still around? He's outside. He's outside. I heard somebody say on the bus, I don't feel very well. And then as I was coming through the traffic lights, the passengers shouted that we need an ambulance. You just need to down the seats. And Prior to that, I thought I heard somebody snoring, which isn't unusual sometimes. Um, and apparently it was him. Uh, so I just swung it round here. The passenger went to the doctors to get a, a GP. The doctor made a day who came. Um, okay. They're doing the rest. Right. We've got about one minute before that. It's 29 minutes since the CPR call came in and the patient is not responding. Yeah, slide to the door. One, two, three. He hasn't taken a breath despite being shocked four times. All right, he's on a bit of an angle. Uh. Okay, sorry, I got in there. One, two, three. You happy? Yeah. I'll start bimbling. Hi, um, I've got a 60-year-old um, cardiac arrest for you. He's been shocked four times, has had five adrenalines. I've always wanted a job in uniform. I can't do normal jobs. I'd never carry work home with me. Right, we're here. I, I don't go home and think about what I've been to that day, because I think you just drive yourself insane. Watch his arm there, John. I don't go up to people in the street saying, oh, I'm a paramedic, I do this, I do that. I just crack on with my normal life. Despite the efforts of the GP, the crews and the team in A&E, the patient fails to regain consciousness and is pronounced dead at the hospital. He is one of 18 fatal cardiac arrests dealt with by West Midlands Ambulance Service today. Right, let's change that. I'm not going to say that nothing will ever get to me. Something will. After a job, I will sit back and think, oh, God, maybe I should have done that different. But I think with us as paramedics, I think we need to do that. Well, we'll give you a shout when we make scene. Okay, so we see. At the time, I deal with it, I go with it. Are they breathing? Have I got them to hospital? Everything's done. And then if not, I will sit back and reflect on it all. It's the night shift, and 50 miles from central Birmingham, a call comes in from Shrewsbury. Ambulance service, yes. OK, what's the main reason for the call? My husband is laying on the floor. OK. He said so he was just for the moment, and that's why he fell. Right. Is the door unlocked? I might have trouble with the top bolt. Do you want to just... not unlock very tall. Just make sure you go and unlock it so the crew can get in, OK? Ambulance crew 4452, Sham and Nina, are nearest to the call and have been dispatched. All we know is there's an adult male, three minutes away. Something medical, so that could be from anything from a splinter 
to, he's had a full on decapitation. But we'll find out when we get there, I suppose. Just ahead. 5 2 receiving. 5 2, thank you. Just close that plate for you. I think the plate has had a full cleaning back injury. And uh, he's 97 years of age. Receive that. Yeah, receiver just pulling into the street now, over. Oh, Harold. We're here, Harold. Arrived in mode activated. Oh, there's somebody at the door. Oh, he must be then. Can you manage? Back door. Yeah, she's coming. I can see her. Can you reach the top lock? Sorry? Can you reach the top bolt? She can't reach the lock. Ah, oh, Sham, she's bringing a chair to stand on. Oh, God, she's going to fall, isn't she? I don't want you climbing on a chair just in case you fall. They could open this window and climb through it. She's back at this door. Press the button, that's it. Hello. Oh, God, I'm not getting through that. <laughs> it's OK. Let's have a look. Let me try and embarrass myself. This is not going to work. Just a bunk up. No, no, it should be OK. Oh, God, I can't get my leg up. <laughs> You're tiny than me. Come on. Come on, Nina. If I touch your bum, I apologise. <laughs> it's very slippery, so be careful. Right, you can get my legs through. <laughs> Suck in. <laughs> You're making it. Be careful, be careful. Where's your foot? Come here, foot. Give me a leg. <laughs> you gonna make it? Yeah. Go on, Nina. <laughs> I used to be an events manager at RAF Cosford, so I've gone from organising gala dinners and flying displays to this, so massively different. <laughs> Nina, you are a legend. We meet people, you know, in their hour of need. Just having someone there sometimes is all you need. And it's a real privilege to be the one person that they turn to. Hello, sir. Is it Harold? How are you? What's happened here today, then? That's no. Where did you fall from? From the third way. So you didn't go dizzy or anything like that? No, no, I just... Yeah. The footy. Let me just... I'm going to start from the top and I'm going to work my way down. Oh. Any pain there? No, not at the moment. There? No. OK, brilliant. Right, what we're going to do is get you off this floor, then. Yeah. OK? Yeah, OK. Ready? Ah. There we go. Hello. Hello. OK. Oh. Lean against me, it's fine. Hang on, I've gone all busy now. All right. Take your time. Have a minute. You remember falling and everything? Oh, I remember falling, all right. Brilliant. There's no loss of consciousness or anything? You didn't black out? I think I didn't black out. I just... OK. Just blame myself and swore yeah. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We can all swear once in a while. So you do everything yourself? Yeah. No, normally we get, we get around low cases with me swelling of the leaf. Have you ever thought about having some carers that could come and help you? No, we feel that you have got to hang around for dates and times to come and, you know, think, why are you hanging about? You'll do it. <laughs> you know, that's as simple as that. Harold, you're amazing. Harold? I'm thinking about making a call to a referral service who can just come and maybe look at ways to help you in the house. It's just to get you some equipment to help you stay in your own home. Yeah. To make it a little bit easier for you to yeah. stay here. Yeah. How did you meet Lucy? Well, I was a bank messenger in Lloyd's Bank and my wife was in the office in the City of London. Was it love at first sight? And it took a while. <laughs> <laughs> who asked who out? I asked if you like to come for a drink, and that was the beginning of it. And we should go ballroom dancing and all that sort of thing, you know. How long before you got married? 
Yeah, about six months, I suppose. Six months. You did hang about? No, not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> You've been trouble ever since. <laughs> <laughs> we go to these people when they're, they're very frail, very old, but then to think back 70, 80 years for when they were in their 20s, just getting married, the things that they've done for each other all of those years, they look out for each other, but it's when that ends, that's when it has a massive impact on the other person. Keep you warm. Just leave it for a little while. It scares me to think that I'll be left on my own. But if I go first, what, what's going to happen? You know, will the kids manage? Will we manage? It's scary getting old. Does it tell me anything about him? He doesn't need to go to hospital. But if anything develops after, you can always call an ambulance. Yes. OK? Yeah. Lovely to have met you both. Right. Bye, Lucy. Bye, Bye. Harold. Bye-bye. <laughs> Don't put the bolt on. 40% of patients have no need for a trip to hospital. Harold and Lucy will be referred to a specialist team who will assess their needs at home. I can't believe she was going to climb on the chair to open her door. She couldn't have even been four foot tall, that lady. She didn't even hesitate. Amazing. We need to take some of our youth and just come here and say, look at this. Look at this. You called an ambulance because you stubbed your toe and you're 30. Look at these. They're 97, 94. And the man only called because his wife couldn't get him up. Thank you. Are you back on station yet, Eva? Four hours into a new shift. We'll be there as quickly as we can for you. And the control room have already taken 494 999 calls. Is that the ambulance, did you say? OK, love, I'll leave you with them then, OK? Sham and Nina are back on. They just finished with their second patient of the day. Nice, happy patient, that was. You seem to have got the easy one. That's what gets me through the day. Bottle of wine. <laughs> Happy to clear? Yeah, let's see what the... See what fun we've got now. What the gods have waiting for us. Ambulance here, this is the patient breathing. Yes. And this is patient conscious. Yes. And no reason for the call, please. Dr. Dock has just told me to contact you. We've got a resident at this nursing home that um, tends to not have sepsis. Yes, it's OK. Is it male or female? Male. Sepsis is caused when the body's immune system overreacts to an infection and can be life-threatening. The crew are 12 miles away from the core. It will take them 60 minutes on blue lights to get there. Surely we can't be the closest to this. The trouble is, Shropshire is just so vast, though, isn't it? It's a massive county. And this care home is out in the middle of nowhere. That ambulance will look, normally cover this area. But there's only one of them. So once they're on a job, that's it. We have to go. It's just here on the left. Yeah. All right, Harold. I'm trying to stick a couple of sticky dots on you, OK? Just going to have a quick look at your heart, OK? The patient, Harold, has prostate cancer and dementia. He's been resident at this nursing home for just five days. Right, so what happened this morning, Zoe? Well, for the, literally, it's been a few days now. We've been trying to encourage diet and fluids, trying to give meds like we would anybody normally, but it's getting, he's getting more resistant to treatment. He used to be able to verbalise what he wants, but since he's been here, he's practically muted. He doesn't speak it's not, to us at all. Not what about family support? Oh, are they...? Family are here quite regularly. He's got two sons we've just tried to contact. When do you think he last ate? 
properly a few days ago, properly, Nate. Yeah, he'll it's, have it's, bits and pieces. Family have been trying to cope him with sweets, as you can see. There's things all around the room. But it just depends what mood he's in. Do you want my hands? Harold, are you able to talk to us? Can you make any sound? Does anywhere hurt? Harold, I'm just going to shine a light in your eye, darling, sorry. All of our observations are fine. I'm not disputing that he doesn't need to go into hospital. He's clearly not presenting how he usually does. I don't really want him to be sitting in A&E. Yeah, if we can get him onto an AMU or something. Get him into a ward. Hopefully we can get him spoke, speak to a doctor, see if we can get him on AMU. Harold was referred to the ambulance service this morning by Shropdoc, the on-call GP service in Shropshire. Nina calls them back to see if they can assist in getting Harold the most appropriate care at hospital. Hi, Dr Kumar. We've done all of our observations on Harold and the, it's not triggering anything sepsis-wise because it comes through to us okay. query sepsis. Yeah. But clearly Harold is, is not looking too well. We're not, we're not disputing that he doesn't need to go to hospital because we think he does, yeah. but we, yeah. we want to try and get him onto AMU or something like that rather than A&E because there's no verbal communication from him. There's nothing... <laughs> acute that we can see. Uh, give me a few five minutes, I'll call you back. Yeah? That's wonderful. Thank you, Dr Kumar. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Just going to wait for the doctor to call us back. All right. So we're going to wait for the doctor to call and see if we can get you into somewhere comfortable at hospital. How does that sound? Can you squeeze my hand? Lovely. Sometimes the only place we can go is A&E. Squeeze my hand if you feel fed up. That was a big squeeze. If you're 90, you're sat in a corridor and then the next ambulance crew brings in somebody who's intoxicated, who's effing and blinding, who's shouting, who's demanding things. Is that an environment you want your nan to be in? Are you happy for me to go get the bed, Nina? Just, we're going to need the bed anyway, so I'll go get all the... Right. Hello, Nina Mitchell. Uh, hi, Nina. It's uh, Simon from Shropshire Doctors on behalf of Dr Kumar. Hi, Simon. Uh, hi, we just spoke to the bleep holder at the Princess Royal. Um, there are no beds, so it's going to have to be a &E anyway. OK. OK, sorry about that. No, that's fine. OK. That's all lovely. Right. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye now. Bye. It is just so frustrating that they've only got so many beds. If those beds are all full with patients, then physically there's nowhere for us to put our patients. OK, ready, steady, slide. OK. Everyone happy? Got a bit? Really, it's nobody's fault. It's not the hospital's fault. It's not our fault. It's just we can't cope with the capacity, really. Looks like we're going to go rallying, Harold. Oh. Thank you for your help. You know you've been wonderful. Thank you so much. You're tired, Harold. You rest your hand on my knee. It's been a while since a man put his hand on my knee. Hello there. Oh, hello. You OK? Yeah. He's just on the back. If you want to say hello to him, it's fine. He's there. He's got his hand on my knee, don't disturb us. <laughs> Just careful when you're stepping across. What's your name, sir? Roger. Roger. Harold, Roger's here. All right. I keep having to tell myself it's not my mum, it's not my dad. But then straight away I go back to, well, it's, but it's somebody else's mum or it's somebody else's dad. He's yeah. squeezing our hand yeah. and stuff. So he, even though he's not saying anything, he's fully aware of what, what is happening. Keeps putting his hand on my knee, don't you? No, that's him. I lost my uncle, who was like my father figure, very close. 
he had a massive heart attack whilst at home and then this, this guy rocked up that was a first responder. Just the sense of relief that he brought to us. Looks like you've got some lovely family. I think the world are you. Right, we'll see you at A&E then. Yes. Okay. If I can bring that sense of relief to other families, then I'd die happy, really. Harold, I'm going to stay with you, darling, in the back. You're not going to be on your own, lovely. I'm going to be here with you, OK? Can you give me a smile? Bless you. Is that my red cheeks? Are they warm? Harold is nine minutes from the Princess Royal Hospital in Telford, where he's been taken for further tests. In the time Sham and Nina have been with their patient, 231 999 calls have been received. What's the main reason for the call? My husband has tripped over some tree roots on a walking path. He's done something to his upper leg and he can't move and he's in a lot of pain. Do I have an ambulance straight away? patient breathing. I'm not answering all these bullshit questions, mate. You need to send an ambulance, ma'am. I'm sorry, test for express in the middle of town. Jesus, you just walk your breathing to death? OK. He's in absolutely pissing the blood. What's actually happened to the patient? He's fell down the embankment and hit his head on one of the sleepers. He's bleeding from his head. What's the address of the emergency? He's 500 yards from the signal box at View v Seven Valley Railway. Mike and Dave cover an area of rural Worcestershire spanning a thousand square miles. They're 25 minutes away from the incident. Go ahead, Emma. Oh, my God, my kids, the best access point is from the bypass where it goes over the Seven Valley Railway, right next to this safari park. By the elephants. I imagine. Sorry? By the elephants. And the safari park. Right, OK. That's what I'm guessing. <laughs> Paramedic officer and the heart team, a special unit who deal with patients in difficult to reach areas, are on scene first. I was walking back to get to my car and I tripped. You tripped over here, did you? Yeah. Did you pass out at all? No, but it's quite a gash on my head. Okay. I lost quite a bit of blood. Okay. I just feel sick and I was throbbing here, yeah. It's about a uh, two and a half inch laceration. Yeah. Um, it has stopped bleeding. Yeah. Okay, but it's going to need looking at. It's probably going to need some stitches. Yeah. All right. photographer he's been taking photos of the trains he's fallen over the sleeper he's got a two two and a half inch laceration just here his obs wise fantastic but we just need to get access down there and cut a hole in the fence and just walk him through it to okay so you only need us for for transport then yeah, yeah. okay and just monitoring on route okay all right i think we can manage that all right yeah well i'll just say hello i'm going to be taking you to the hospital so uh we're just going to get get you into a position where we can actually get you off the in embankment sorry for all this problem. hey to be honest what, what else could we be doing in a, a nice sunny day next to the safari park on the seven valley railway you know it could be worse one two three up yeah <laughs> one two three up <laughs> all right go right ni yep. nice and still first all right okay all right yeah. just take your time now if at any point you want to sit down? Just say. All right? This is actually the lion's enclosure now, so uh, 
Let's just pop you on here then. Okay. Mind the step. Right, let's get you some paracetamol. All right, you're okay with paracetamol? Yeah. Are these your uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose tinted yeah, glasses. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <sighs> Happy. Do you know, I've never done a job where I can see elephants and steam trains at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre, isn't it? Geraint will have his wound cleaned and stitched at Worcestershire Royal Hospital. West Midlands Police, the calls just come through to us saying that somebody's fallen down the stairs and she is bleeding and can't move. We'll get some average and our log's going to be 1106. Hello, Cosford. Hi, Cosford. I've got a hem's job for you, please, in Hales, I mean. Yeah, sure. Hales, Owen, fall downstairs, unconscious, query medical, query sort of trauma. For the most time critical cases, the West Midlands Ambulance Service has access to five air ambulances. Suspecting the patient who has fallen downstairs may be suffering major trauma, two doctors and a critical care paramedic based in Cosford are dispatched. Just advise, uh, lifted from Cosford, ETA, 10 minutes. In addition to the Helimed team, two ambulance crews have also been dispatched to the address in Hales Owen. The call has been passed on to the ambulance service by police. The control room decides to try and get a fuller picture from the patient. Hello, this is Brethren Ambulance Service. This is Natasha Details, because you told me somebody's fallen down the stairs. Are you with them now? Yes, I'm okay, Mummy. Sorry? Hello? We've got the address, so we've got help coming to you. So I'm trying to help you. Can you tell me what's happening? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So how old is he? So do you need an ambulance? Because we're really busy dealing with life-threatening emergencies. Yeah, well, we've got your address. I've got help coming to you and the police are coming as well. So do you need an ambulance? Because we're really busy dealing with life. Oh, hang it up. Yeah, Mr. Three, just get your updated. Um, please believe this could possibly be a hoax call. They are just double-checking the address to make sure. Just from their voice, you can just tell that they're young. They keep laughing, saying that somebody's fallen down the stairs and they're bleeding from their back passage. So... They're trying to be funny. You can deal with people shouting at you and being stressed and angry and even calling for things that aren't really emergencies, but they actually want help, whereas this person just keeps laughing every time that I say something, so I almost guarantee there's nothing actually happening there. The first ambulance crew has arrived on scene. I did um, knock on the door. The lady there had absolutely no idea why we'd been called, so I don't think she's involved in the hoax but she confirmed that this was the right address as the one given. That's all very safe. You can stand down. And they've confirmed they're at the correct address. So there's no patient there. Stop call, stop call. Received. Received. Besides two ambulances, the hoax has tied up the Midlands Air Ambulance for 12 minutes at a time when the control room is dealing with over 200 calls an hour. Hello. Hello, sweetheart. What's um, happened there? Uh, What's going on there, sweetheart? Your mummy's being really sick. Where are you? I'm in America. I'm in America. You think I'm in Africa? Each year, the West Midlands Ambulance Service takes more than 1,000 hoax calls. 
Uh, it's then like a young child caller calling through, saying her mommy's vomiting. Right. And then it's just cleared, and I'm calling back, and there's no answer. Right, I'll see if I've got any history on the phone. Oh, I'll yeah. keep trying. You can't breathe. OK, where are you? Do you need an ambulance? Do you need an ambulance? Yeah, I want to die. Listen to me. Right, this is the supervisor at the ambulance service. I need to know, was somebody not breathing or are you messing about now? Hello? Cleared. Cleared. It's annoying. Obviously, this costs a lot of money to run. Um, I think it's something like £25 per minute with your fuel and stuff like that. Um, and it's a long way to go for something that's a hoax. You do stupid things when you're a child, but I'd, I'd, I would never have dreamt of doing that. My dad was a copper. If I ever thought that I did that, my dad had to chop my fingers off. I can't understand the mentality. I really can't. It is soul destroying, especially when you're getting genuine jobs coming in. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. Hello, it's West Mercia Police, and yes, he is. Good morning, if we could have your assistance, please. What's the reason for the call? We've got a um, Section 136 making threats against self harm. 4313, thank you. Are you ready to clear now, I believe, ever? Yeah, that's uh, Right, I've got another job for you, please, mate. It's a bit of a distance, but you're my only crew at the minute. Yeah, that's uh, my well. Thank you. Control standing by. West Midlands Ambulance Service has seen calls to sectioned patients increase by nearly a third in the past two years. So that's uh, Section 136. <laughs> that means that the police have sectioned the patient. So uh, they will have made arrangements to have him booked into somewhere special, somewhere that can look after him, basically. Yeah, yeah. Oh. What can we do for you? He's threatening to kill himself. While we've been there, he's still threatening to kill himself. And he's saying that, basically, he just wants to walk off and die somewhere. OK. So he's been detained under the mental health act there. OK. He's got a um, few bruises and a couple of cuts to his knuckles where he's just been going around punching stuff. He's punched the back of the van while being in there. Any previous at all? Mental health-wise, he's saying he's never been assessed. For OK, him. and you've got nothing on him at no, all? No, no we, we were given no warnings when we got there, literally, other than he was going to stab himself in the heart with a knife. OK. OK. Hello, mate. Right, wait there, Right. I'm a seat in that chair there. What's been going on then, mate? I don't know, man. I'm just depressed all the time. I don't know how to deal with anything. I'll drink something, I'll get myself to a complete part where I'm fucked, and I'll black out. My rage will take over. It's what I believe it is. It's smashing everything up in sight that I have a problem with. Right. Because I'm just, like, literally begging for attention, and the people I want to fucking have the attention from don't seem to help me or can't help me. OK. So I'm just drinking and smoking whatever the hell I can I think's going to make me feel better. After the bitch broke up with me and fucked off with my friend on PS4... So this has all been sparked off by a girl? Yeah. So you're not self-harmed and you've not taken any overdoses? Uh, some, some of the trials are fine. Not very strong. I popped some and Jack and a bottle of Jackie D's to pop them down with. Metazapine. Metazapine, whatever. He's taken metazapine tablets so we can't get to um, Elgar, can we? Take them. Did you take the metazapine today? Yes. If the patient has overdosed, he'll need urgent care. So Mike and Dave divert from the mental health unit to A&E. Explain to me what's going to happen so when I know when I get there if it's going to help or not, so I know. We're going to go to A&E now because you've taken, you said you've taken these tablets. I'm going to try and pump my stomach, right, or something shit like that, but I can do that my damn self. I need sleeping tablets. I've got fucking insomnia. I can't sleep. My anger is coming from that. I can never sleep. I'm smoking weed. I'm drinking. I pass out. I can never sleep. Mike and Dave are heading to Worcestershire Royal Hospital, but there are five ambulances already waiting to hand over patients at A&E. 
Unless immediately life-threatening, each new admission has to wait at least half an hour. I was just going to take yeah, long enough. It's going to take a lot longer now, because we've got to go into A&E first. What I want is impossible. What I need is my family just to support me. Yeah, but he's spoken to it. It's what my dad here, right? I know. So why isn't he here to support me right now? amount of calls. Year on year in, it, it does get busier. In an ideal world, there'll be ambulances galore, there'll be A&Es galore, there'll be nurses galore, and there'll be beds galore. However, that's not the case. With the patient clearly anxious and facing an inevitable delay, Mike and Dave decide to wait in the ambulance. Mike? Yes, mate. I'll go back in there and see what, what's happening, all right? Yes, yeah, see if we can uh, give you a little bit. Thing. All right. So you're constantly watching the clock, basically because you want what's best for your patient, but more importantly, you want to get out there and actually make a difference to another patient as well. You want a blanket? You look like you're freezing to death. There you are, mate. Better? Cool. He's still on the case. All right, still nowhere yet. Oh, no. This is still the best place at the moment. He's pulled his cap down over his eyes. He's having a bit of a kip, isn't he, mate? He's trying, but we're all talking. Not really, OK, OK. No, they're actually queuing outside the door. They're literally, there's four, no, between the two doors. Really? Yeah, there's five patients in there. Five. In the air. Oh, here we go. Oh. Oh, nice. Cubicle six. Cubicle six. Okay. Bingo, bango. Yay. Magic, thanks, sir. Sorry about all. After an hour's wait, the patient has finally been found a bed in A&E. Can I Hello, can I have a taxi, please? Oh, a taxi and ambulance, please. <laughs> have you taken something? Yeah, he's taken heroin, apparently. He's taken heroin? Well, what's his breathing like now? Labored. Oh, there you go. Sounds like he's asleep more than anything. Ambulance service, can I help you? Yeah, the patient's um, been on the phone to the Department of Work and Pensions and disclosed that he's taken an overdose. Do we know if this was a suicide attempt or unconfirmed? Oh, no. All ambulances in the area are busy on other jobs. Sham and Nina are on their way back to base for their break, but are diverted to the overdose patient instead. 4452 receiving. It's coming through 54 year old. Male patient has taken an overdose. Um, Paracetamol, ibuprofen within the last 30 minutes. Yeah, that's received. We're mobile, thank you. Department of Work Pensions are telling us about it and their protocol is to stay on the telephone line. Oh, so he's obviously told somebody at the Department of Work and Pensions about it. They've called us. That's unusual, isn't it? Yeah. Has been shown in this address. It looks like uh, the patient in the past does seem to suffer with the mental health and self-harm via sort of the alcohol and overdoses received away. Yeah, that's received. Now we've got to the property. I think I might have been here before, over. I've been here before with the police. My name's Nina and this is Sham. I haven't seen you for a long time. What's been happening? I've done a lot of damage to myself. How much have you had to drink today, Daniel? Um, I drank from early, early hours this morning. I got up about 3 o'clock this you morning. Know. To to have another drink. Yes. Can I yeah. Me? Because my body, me felt. Me did you body. feel that you needed a drink at that yes, time? Yes, so I did. Are you alcohol dependent? Without a doubt, Flesh. I am. 
Why did you take the tablets? Give yourself a peace of mind. Did you take them with alcohol, with water? I take them with alcohol. You haven't been sick at all or anything then? No, no, they're still down inside of me. Do you know okay. what paracetamol does to you? It's not going to kill you now. It won't no. kill you today. Okay. It's going to kill you over a long period of time. Sure, and I don't mind. It's a horrible death, darling. I don't mind. We need to pop you up to the hospital, no, sweetheart. No, no, I'm not walking back. No, we can arrange for transport to no, get you they back. No, won't, they won't give that, look. Daniel, you know that. We have a dilemma here. We have a duty of care, Daniel. We can't I know, leave I you know here. That. Yeah, and we've yeah. had this conversation oh. before, haven't we? Yeah. We, we can't say, OK, no problem, see you later. We can't leave you at home. There, there is no way. Do you get any help from the, the mental health team, the crisis no. team? They don't even really want to even recognise it. I want to get Derek involved. I, I'd like to give him my, my, my keys. Who's Derek? Derek's just my neighbour. Oh, hang on, Derek might be is here. Is Derek? <laughs> no, 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 it's not Derek. Sorry. You are his brother. His brother. What's he been doing? Not helping him. Oh, my God, we need to Daniel, disconnect you, sweetheart. Daniel, you're my monitor. Daniel, one second. One second, Daniel. Just one second. I'm not helping him. I need permission. Of I'm sorry. I need... Yeah. I'm not helping him. I'm not can I, can I come up, Daniel? Able, are you able to just go outside and...? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But just, just calm him down and just bring... Daniel, can I come upstairs, mate? Right, your brother's, your brother's gone back outside, OK? What, what are you feeling, Dan? What's... I'm feeling hurt. I'm feeling hurt. Well, this is the thing, isn't it? And we know you're hurting and we want to try to find a solution here, don't we? Your brother's gone back outside. He won't come back in until we, you're happy for him to come inside. At the end of the day, I promise you're you... You're in control of this situation, Dan, and we're only going to do what you want to do. If you don't want Si in here, then that's fine. No. You're in control, darling. I respect him. Right, he's my brother. We, we, we have been in contact, you know, for, for years. Yeah. He's come round pretty sharpish, which shows that he he cares, doesn't he? But I don't... I don't want to see him how I am. All right. I want to put that to one side. Absolutely. I don't want him to see I'm hurt. And I am hurt. Shall we go back downstairs then, darling? And I'll right. bring your jacket for you, sweetheart. Where's me brother? We asked him to leave, sweetheart. Where is he? He's just, He's just outside. outside. Would you, you like him? us to bring him in? Yeah? yeah? OK, I'll go get him, all right, Daniel? Is it Sai, his name? Is it Sai? Right. Here right. he is. Right. <laughs> the situation is, obviously, we need him to come to hospital because we can't leave him with the number of tablets that no, he's I've taken. That, yeah. Daniel, is there anything you would like to take to hospital? You've got you. I just don't want to be left there. Do you want me to come? I don't want you to be put put out in your burden. No, it's, it's all right. No, it's all right. You take him to hospital and I'll I'll lock up on him. What, what are you drinking there, morning? Dan? No, no, no. No more alcohol, please. Come on, Danny. Dan, don't drink any more of that, sweetheart. Come on, oi, oi. Dan, come on, we've been no, fair on, to you, on, darling. Mate. You know, that's why I, I don't... Can't. That's why I don't come to see you. You should drink or two. My alcohol. Me too. I can't. I can't stop. I know. I know it's an illness, but it doesn't help things, I'm afraid. Right, come on then, chicken, let's go. Come and take me arm. There you go, hold on to Nina. Come on then. Sai is following in his car to make sure that you're not left there. He clearly cares for you. I know that. That's, and that's that, nice Rudolph. that you've got that support. I, I do know that. Love. We go to lots of people that don't have that, and it's so upsetting.
this is the last suitcase. I've just got to check if I'm looking for tablets because this is not the first time he's took an overdose. And he's got a terrible habit of hiding things. This is basically his, his medication, a lot of it is gastric, drinking tablets to help with vitamin B and depression tablets. So, okay, so they're alright, we won't need them. You're alright, you're a friendly chap. Don't worry, okay? Don't worry mate. That's what we're here for, we're here for you, okay? Nothing else right now matters, as long as you're okay. I'm going to check your blood pressure again. Is that all right? I think we've both started drinking at an early age. Maybe 15, so that's going back. Well, I had an addiction for 42 years, so he's not as much as me, but he's, yeah, I've been able to kick it, but he hasn't, see? So we've tried everything. Whenever you're ready, just let me know, OK? Daniel will be taken for treatment for the paracetamol overdose. His brother, Simon, will follow to A&E by car. I didn't realise until we got to your property that I'd been to you before. But... I never forget a patient, and I remember you were really nice to me last time. And that goes a long way. You're never horrible to us. All right? Let's get you some help. You go into the right place, darling. Had strict parents. Well, my mum wasn't too bad, but we always had the, the wrath of wait till your father gets home. And of course, my dad was an ex-military guy, and he was very strict, and he would beat you for anything. So we, as an escapism, we, we started drinking and smoking and doing that kind of thing to rebel. I was 52 when I went into rehab, and I've been abstinent now for five years. And I found it hard, and I still have cravings for drink, but I, I, go, I have a, a good support system. In a way, I'm defending myself by not going to his house, but I also feel terribly guilty because he's my brother, and he's, he's the last thing I've got from my mum and dad sort of thing, and it's very depressing because you know you want to do more, but you've got to safeguard yourself. How much alcohol do you think you drink each day? That big bottle of cider, will you have one of those every day? And the rest. Do you have two of those in a and day? The Three in a day? And the rest. How many do you have a day, you tell me? Six litres. And then more. Right. If I, I don't have any, I'll go to. Your body now needs alcohol. Your body depends on alcohol. It so if bad. So if you stop that, that can, it can make you. me. Yeah. It can kill me. I know. You need I to do know. it in a controlled way. I know that. You know that. So difficult, isn't it? Oh, I just wish I could wave a magic wand. You can't, sweetheart. You can't. You can't. Time has told me You're a rare, rare find Trouble cure For a troubled mind
you just watch how alcohol destroys families and destroys lives. Not to ask for more. You just want to say, why can't you stop? But it's not as simple as them just stopping. You know, it's an addiction and we must never sort of belittle that. Don't apologise, Dan. No need to apologise, Danny. I've certainly got personal experience of, of family life with somebody with an addiction and the devastation that it can cause. So I think it's easier for me then to not judge people and to be open and honest and say, look, I know what this does. I know that this is destroying your family. But if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes. It's not going to be me telling them to stop drinking. It's going to stop them. They've got to do that themselves. Your tears, they tell me. There's really no way. Next, on ambulance. The M6 is currently down to one lane because of two trees that have fallen. Oh, my good grief. I know that this is horrific for you, but you're bloody lucky. 